Hi, this is the second part of the series about special relativity. In this section, we will show you what is special relativity. Here, we will not talk about time dilation and length contraction. Instead, we will use the simple concepts of relative motion and average speed to show what special relativity is really about. Let's consider this problem. A swimmer is swimming in the river. He wants to swim upstream from point A to point B and then swim back. If his speed in still water is C, and the speed of the river water is V, what is the average speed of his round trip? This problem is very easy to solve. Suppose the distance between A and B is S. Then the upstream time is S divided by C minus V, and the downstream time would be S divided by C plus V. The total time would be S divided by C minus V, plus s divided by c plus v, which would be equal to 2s times c, divided by c squared minus v squared. The average speed is the total distance divided by the total time. It would be 2s divided by 2sc, divided by c squared minus v squared, which would give c times 1 minus v squared, divided by c squared. So the average speed is less than the swimmer speed in still water. Usually, the story will end here. Unfortunately, this swimmer is no other person than your boss. He is very confident with his swimming skills. If you say his average speed is less than the sea, you will certainly get yourself in trouble. So you tell him that something is wrong with the clock or the ruler, and ask him to try again after you have fixed it. But how do you fix it? Well, there are a few ways we can approach this problem. In order to change c times 1 minus v squared divided by c squared to c, you can do one of the following. We can use the slower clock, use a shorter ruler, or change both by a little bit. Solution 1 would be using a slower clock. So t fix would be equal to 1 divided by 1 minus v squared by c squared. Solution 2 would be a shorter ruler. So l fix would be equal to 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. Solution 3 would be using a slower clock and a shorter ruler. So t fix would be equal to 1 divided by square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. And l fix would be equal to a square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. So in this scenario, the t fix and l fix are the rate by which the clock and ruler are to be changed. Could this be a coincidence? Do the formulas in solution 3 look very familiar to us? Do they remind you of something about special relativity? Well, it seems that our clock fixing formula in solution 3 and the time dilation formula in special relativity look very alike. Actually, our slower clock gives exactly the smaller reading of time needed in special relativity. Is this a coincidence? Absolutely not. Let's recap for a second. How did our formulas come out? First, we assume the swimmer's motion is relative and let him do a round trip along the bank. That is why the c minus v and c plus v are there. Then, we assume the swimmer's motion is absolute. That is to say, whether relative to the bank or to the river water, the swimmer's speed is always c. In the end, to make up the difference between an average speed in relative motion and an absolute motion, we have no choice but to make the clock slower or make the ruler shorter. It seems that special relativity followed the exact same process. Just replace the swimmer with a beam of light. Our illustration works the exact same for special relativity. First, Einstein assumed light's motion is relative and let light do a round trip along the x-axis of the reference frames. That is where the c minus v and c plus v in his first equation came from. Then, he assumed that light's motion is absolute. That is to say, light moves at the same speed c in all reference frames. To compensate for the speed loss caused by relative motion, the observed distance and time were adjusted. Why is special relativity solution unique while well, we have several solutions? Let's recap. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. To get a bigger speed, we can make the distance bigger or make the time smaller. Mathematically, we have one equation with two variables, which has numerous solutions. To get a unique solution, one other restriction is required. For each of our three solutions, we add another restriction. Keep the distance unchanged, keep the time unchanged, or change both by the same extent. The other restriction used by special relativity is the clock synchronization mechanism, which is proposed by Einstein. 
Here is a summary for the section that we just covered. What is special relativity? Special relativity is an effort trying to build a bridge between relative motion and absolute motion. There are numerous solutions for each effort. To make a smaller speed bigger, you have to make the time smaller or distance bigger. That's the cause of time dilation and length contraction. Before we end off this video, I will explain one other thing. So earlier, we showed the first equation of special relativity, but did not really explain the meaning of it. Here is the meaning. Half of the round trip is equal to the upstream time. To strictly represent this meaning, the direction of water flow in our example has to be in the opposite direction. Here, the c minus v is the relative speed when light is chasing after a reference frame, and the c plus v is the relative speed when light and the reference frame are separating. Following will be the references that we have used for this video.